Hey everybody, um, first off, happy 2021. Hopefully it's a better year than 2020 or else, you know, the channel might shift focus. We might be doing more like how to survive the zombie apocalypse stuff if we, uh, you know, still have internet. But um, yeah, so I finished painting up my Shattered Storm Bolt. Um, Good news if you guys, you know, if you like Warcry, we're going to start doing Warcry on the channel. Um, me and my buddy Matt are starting to get really, you know, more into it. And uh, the games are quick. Like the, you know, Warcry game is typically like 30 to 45 minutes. So, and they're, they're fun. There's a lot of variability in the, in the game. It's like just hands down my favorite GW game. But I love the terrain. You know, obviously I love uh, GW minis. Um, so anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's do some painting. Okay, so first up what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and clean up some little seam lines. Uh, and when I'm doing this stuff, I like a exacto blade like this with a curved edge. It's, um, it's just a little better for like scraping and um, yeah, I feel like it just does a better job but I'm mostly worried about the joins so, I want to make sure that there's no seam there's no sprue pieces in between the uh, the little joins because I can you know can put these together and clean them up later and then I'm gonna use some like goopy um, <laughs> plastic glue so this is just like to me an extra fine uh, cement but it ha this it's this stuff but it has pieces of chunks of sprue in there um, that, like cuts up cut offs and then it makes it thicker and it actually acts like a gap filler Both of you fit on here. It's fun. Yep. Looks like they key together. Perfect. But I like this stuff because it sort of it runs into the little cracks through like capillary action. And then it also acts like a gap filler. And it creates a super strong bond because it uh, it has um, acetone in it. And it actually um, melts the two pieces of plastic together. Acetone creates a, um, you know, a chemical reaction where it melts the plastic, it physically melts the plastic together. All right, so now that everything is stuck together, you can see that that plastic glue does a really good job, makes a really tough bond. And then, you know, I'll just like shave down the seam lines, like, uh, like that. And then just kind of um, go over them, you know, with like this stuff, kind of like nail polish. I mean, that's not, it's not very, it's not really a, like an inaccurate uh, analogy because it's like, it's mostly acetone. I think that's like the active ingredient. But um, yeah, so now I'm gonna clean up all of these seam lines. And um, normally what I would do is I would take them outside and then I would prime them with some I like this stuff, it's like a, it's a Rust-Oleum, it's a spray paint, but it has like a chalky finish, so it's almost like a blackboard kind of spray paint, and it does a really good job for terrain, but, th but it's snowing outside, <laughs> so I'm just going to use my good primer, my airbrush primer, um, you know, like a good, 
thing of airbrush primer. It's probably gonna run you like seven dollars. This these this stuff run you like closer to like four or five dollars at like Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And then um you know a a, a GW can of um their primer is like eighteen dollars, so <laughs> yeah. Use what you have, I guess. These little um, emery board things, like nail files, they are great for knocking down seam lines on things too. Um, and then if you're working with something like this, it's supposed to be like stone, it creates some great texture. Just a little hot tip. Just makes really quick work of uh, seam lines. Promise we're gonna be painting soon. All right, finally ready to do some painting. I got my pickup truck airbrush. Um, <laughs> just put paint in it and it goes. It's not very picky. The I uh, water Neo. And I'm just gonna mix up a jar of primer. And then I'm going to thin it down a little bit, just a little. So my airbrush thinner. Okay, so I got everything primed, and I actually got a ton of stuff primed out of that one little jar of paint. Um, and I was thinking about gluing these guys down. These are going to be like the most awkward to paint, because they need to really, you know, rest on something. Uh, if I can't, if I want to get the shadows in there the way I want them to. And I thought about gluing these down, but I think that if I plan on using these for Warcry, you know, with the cards that come with them, then you're supposed to leave these, um, you know, so that you can move them around. So these guys are probably the most dry. Um, so I think I'm gonna start doing those first. Okay, so I'm just looking at the box art. Go. Uh, doing a little bit of color mashing with this and I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some Vallejo Stonewall Gray and I do like this. I like this box art a lot. So I'm gonna start with this and then I'm just gonna thin it down to like a, you know, uh, reverse consistency. And uh, I'm going to just use this color because if I have to mix up more later, I know, you know, it'll be easy to replicate. Use more of my airbrush thinner. And I just want this to be you know, thin enough to drill through the airbrush the way that I want it to. In fact, I'm gonna use a different airbrush. And use the harder and steam back.
Okay, so most everything else is just going to get just this kind of overtone of uh, stonewall gray. But with these guys, I think I want to leave this part kind of black. And then um, I think I'm going to give these guys more of a bronze patina kind of look. Um, upper degree. So I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to really... You know, if I need to, I can just come back in and touch this up, but I think I'm just gonna try and freehand it. So I'm just gonna use an index card like this. And then try, uh, airbrush it like that. So now what I want to do is I just want to, I kind of left these guys a little bit light uh, intentionally. So I'm kind of going to do something sort of like a contrast paint, you know, like a filter. Um, so I'm going to use some oil paints. Um, Uh, and then I'm just gonna make it really thin. And I'm gonna, the colors I'm using is phthalo green and phthalo blue. And um, so phthalo, the pigment, is kind of transparent on its own. It's not a very opaque pigment. Like if you put this color down on top of a red, um, it would look, you know, very like black. Kind of. So I'm going to mix up some... Mm, that, should, that should be plenty to do what I want to do. Because mostly I just want to sort of add some color to make a filter. I don't want to like paint on it. Paint, paint with, you know, opaque uh, color. So... I'm going to use I'm going to use a synthetic brush that I don't really care too much about. Um, you know, like these th this stuff can be pretty tough on brushes, uh, Gamsol, this paint thinner stuff. It's just odorless mineral spirits. Um so I just want to make uh, some color, you know, it's like a deep, uh, kind of deep green, like sea green. Uh, but I also don't want it to be, you know, I want it to be super runny. So it'll just sort of run into the cracks, you know? You know? even be a little more opaque than that. But I just want it to be a filter. I'm going to use my airbrush layer to keep the shadows in there, uh, you know, where I want them. And then I'm going to let this kind of just sort of define those little details, just run into the cracks. And if I wanted to, you know, I could, I could take like a tape paper towel and then just like dab off the top. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Just, you know, dab it off like that and then leave it in the recesses. But um, that's not what I want to do. I want to just use it like a filter to just sort of put some color on top of there. And I don't care if it gets coffee stainy looking, that's fine. Just 
going to add to the sort of marbling effect. So uh, I'm also going to go around and get like these guys. And, uh, and these guys. I want them to sort of have that brass uh, kind of patina look. And, you know, I'm not really being neat or anything at this point because, um, I'm gonna clean it up later. <laughs> And also, I'm going to put some verdigris on this guy. But it's also just going to have a really different look because it's so dark. Now I'm going to do the same thing with some other colors. I'm going to use a yellow ochre and a burnt umber and a nice lamp black. So I want to use this uh, kind of black and brown just all over. Mm, a more of a black. That's gonna sort of redefine those shadows. Then I can just come in with a paper towel, kind of dab it off. Just want to stain it. leave some of the stone color black. Okay, you can start to see all this stuff kind of coming together. Uh, it's starting to look a lot more like natural stone. But um, yeah, I, I didn't really end up using any of the yellow ochre and the, most of the just black, you know, washes, except for this, except for the rust, because I want this to be iron rust and not like a bronze, you know, copper kind of rust. So I'm just gonna put some rust on here. And, me, and then I'm going to let all this stuff dry overnight. All right, so like the really messy part is over. <laughs> so you don't have to look at my gross um, painting mat anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so this stuff, this is dry, this part. It's been not 24 hours, but like 12. You know, like I left them overnight to dry, but like this part, this where it's thicker, this part is not gonna be like, this is still slightly, you know, it's still not completely dry. So what I wanna do is I wanna do some dry brushing now. Um, so I'm gonna use some uh, P3 Sickly Skin. Um, on my stone. So I'm going to use a decent sized flat and just going to have a piece of MDF panel right here. 
and uh, then I'm just gonna go like against the grain on these guys and do some light dry brushing on the edges to kind of pick out the um, like and if I have any boo-boos and kind of cover those up too um, I just want to pick out any like sculptural details like these little ridges and stuff you know so I'm just gonna go around all of the stone all over Alright, so after that step, um, you, know, you can see how things are starting to look. Uh, these guys are looking fantastic. Um, but there was a cup, there is an issue. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I, I was handling these and then, you know, like I, I didn't even notice it, but the, the green um, oil paint was coming up on my fingers and then rubbing off where I was handling it. So, um, but I think I have a cool solution to kind of cover that up a little bit later. Um, but anyways, first what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some more dry brushing. Um, I'm going to use some uh, P3 Elder Screen. And I think... I'm going to switch to, no, I'll keep using a flat. I really don't, I don't use good brushes for dry brushing. It's just a cheapo craft brush. I think I also use this for painting like with glue or Mod Podge. That's probably what that is. So I just want to do the same thing with these. And since these are still like wet a little bit, the oil paint is still wet. I mean, it's totally fine, um, but it's going to sort of wet blend with the oils and the acrylics, um, sort of, kind of. But also when I was doing this, I noticed that there was some like spillover from the oil paints, you know, like seeping down. Uh, so I think I might do something with that later. What I was thinking about possibly doing was doing some like OSL stuff where I was gonna make these little runes, maybe make some of them kind of glowing and then having that cast some light out. For, for this, I just want this to look like a cool kind of Egyptian sort of uh, jade color. All right, I'm gonna start working on the uh, some of this brass stuff. Um, so I think I'm gonna use um, P3 Deathless Metal to start with. It's just a really dark kind of metallic brass color. But I think I'm gonna to switch to a makeup brush because I want these to be really soft. The, um, uh, you know, soft blends. And I want to do this first. I'm going to keep going with more patina stuff, uh, making, you know, brass uh, kind of colors. But I want to start, you know, putting in some dark brass colors first before I go. Uh, I'm going to do some more light patina kind of stuff later. But this is gonna be like the, the dark, the dark part.
use a, uh, a smaller makeup brush to get the uh, like claws and stuff, little details like that. These guys too. And you know, again, like this stuff is still kind of wet because it's the oil just doesn't dry yet, even, you know, like 12 hours later. So it's sort of blending into there. So I'm pretty happy with everything so far, like it's like these, you know, these statues and these pillars and stuff, you know, I really like how they look, but I think I want to put some more like marbling stuff into the stone. Uh, so I think especially like on, especially on these parts and like just these big bare kind of open tile pieces. And then I think I'm going to do this as like some kind of a brass, um, but I think I want to do some kind of different looking stones sort of laid in here. And then I'm also going to do that with these guys on the top because I'm just not really happy with how this looks. And then I'm going to make this some kind of a brass. So the first step in doing all that is going to be to Let's see, do I want to marble these stairs? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to marble this stuff and then this stuff. So I'm going to mask, I'm going to go ahead and mask some things off. Okay, so I've got some kind of low tack uh, painter's tape, you know? So this is just like painter's masking tape that won't peel up paint. <laughs> It's kind of gentle, it's not like super sticky, like, you know, duct tape or something. So I'm just going to make a little mask area for everything that I don't want to airbrush. got a quick little mask on. Um, I'm going to mix up some Vallejo Model Air Gold. And, you know, even though this stuff goes through the airbrush pretty well, I'm still going to thin it down a little bit. Finally, my top color, I think I'm going to go with this nice uh, US Air Force green because I think it's just, I want everything to look, to have some green on it, you know, tie everything together.
Mm -hmm. Might be a little bit dark. Mix in a little bit of this brighter green, get a nice jade green. It's okay if there's still a little bit of the black and the gold in there. Um, and then what I like to do is, uh, and there's tons of ways that you can do this. You can use like baby wipes, you can use um, dryer sheets, you can use like, you know, sanitizer wipes or whatever. I just like cotton balls because I feel like you get some really organic looking kind of shapes. And then you can kind of blot at it you get this cool um, marble effect. Kind of spider webbing, like. It would probably be good if I did it up where you can see it on the camera. So now um, I'm going to take some Game Ink Green um, and sometimes you know the Game Inks they like to dry a little bit glossy, it depends on the color, uh, but that's okay if it does because you know this is supposed to be like a polished stone. Uh, so. I'm just gonna kind of glaze over all of that marble stuff. Mm, might need to water it down just a tiny bit. This is my airbrush stuff has some flow improver in it too, you know, mostly like Windex it has some uh, other ingredients in it. Gotta help it to uh, get down in the cracks. some spots. Yeah, I'm liking that. Gives the color a little more depth. Okay, so I started doing this. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm doing the same thing with some Game Ink Black. And then I'm just gonna try and sort of glaze over some of these spots, uh, like these, these parts of these columns to kind of break them up a little bit. And I haven't really decided about these guys yet. I think I am gonna do it around here. I'm gonna do the same color. But then I haven't decided about whether I wanna marble this stuff more or not. So I'm just gonna leave this masked off for now. Okay, 
And now I'm gonna put some... Oh, you know what, actually I need to do these first. I'm gonna put some Agrax Earthshade on these, but um, I'm gonna do... I think I want these to be like brass. So I'm gonna do those, do some dry brushing with some more. Uh, Deathless Metal. And... Yeah, get all of those first. So, uh, minor setback. <laughs> I was, uh, I was doing these and first of all, I don't feel like this marble stuff is quite there yet. Um, I was gonna remask them off and then do something, um, different with the, uh, this marbling. And I was gonna, and I was doing these little, you know, these guys. And I noticed that the masking tape Peeled up some of the paint. Uh, this one was the worst one. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is take all of these guys out and give them a coat of varnish um, before I start really working on them and uh, much more. And um, and then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna remask everything, and then I'm gonna come back and do more with the marbling stuff before I start trying to make these look more like a weathered metal. So, okay. And then, hopefully, these guys, um, hopefully none of this stuff comes off, because I'm gonna pull this off and hope that none of this paint job comes off. It looks like that's just the oil paint. It's just like, just a little bit of oil paint came up, so. But the paint job, okay. The paint job looks okay on these guys. So I think I'm gonna take these guys outside, I'm gonna varnish them, and then I'm gonna do some of the copper patina stuff that I wanted to do on these uh, before I varnish these, since they're gonna have to dry for, you know, hours. Check on this guy. Uh, come off. Ooh. They pulling off the band-aid. They look okay. Alright. So, yeah. Okay, well everybody else, well, the big guys are outside doing their thing. I'm gonna work on this, these, just these. Um, I'm gonna do some patina on these. And these guys. Uh, and then everybody's gonna get it couple good coats of varnish uh, especially since these are gonna get played on you know you really want to protect them as best as I can so I'm gonna use my you know my airbrush thinner again um, to really water this stuff down like more than half an hour so you know this is definitely like thinner than Glaze consistency, the pigments are just totally broken and runny, and you know, that's what I want. Because I want it to just slough off the tops of the surfaces and then run into the cracks and create that cool, you know, bird gray patina just in the cracks. And you know, my airbrush thinner, it has the, it has flow improver in it. It has rubbing alcohol in it and Windex and, um, so, and you know, the, the rubbing alcohol kind of has an interaction with uh, acrylics. It, it makes them, you know, break down. gonna create a cool you know patina effect and it's also gonna kind of have like 
a little bit of a chemical reaction in some places, like with the oil paints and the um, acrylics, you know, mixed together. And uh, just because it looks cool, I'm going to take some and put it in the ruins too. Just to get some, uh, some cool looking little, you know, glowing runes. So you can see like, it's not totally dry, but uh, it's more of a subtle effect, you know, uh, than you would think. Like these guys, you can't even really see the glow too, too much, but you can see it. It's pretty subtle. So uh, I just want to come in and kind of re-highlight some of these little brass pieces. So I'm just going to use a lighter brass and kind of blend it in, you know, on, t on the tippy tops of these guys. Just like, very, very light little highlights. Just to really make these statues pop, you know, because they're going to be like centerpieces. Okay, so I uh, I did another, you know, I did my little vertigree thing on these guys, and. <clears throat> We actually uh, played a bunch of games on these, uh, a bunch of uh, Night Haunts versus Works games on these the other day, um, last night. So now, um, I, and I gave everything a co another coat of varnish. You know, like these are gonna be played on, so I want everything to be nice and varnished. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remask all of this now, and then I'm gonna do the rest of the marbling, and I'm gonna use a dryer sheet. So this is just a used dryer sheet, you know. Uh, so I'm just gonna try and like pull it apart a little bit to get some cool looking little, you know, cells. Um, yeah, uh, um, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say about that. You know, it's just, it's just a dryer sheet, but you can see that you get some cool looking kind of organic sort of spidery spiderweb looking shapes to make like a nice marble with you know <clears throat> so yep i'm gonna mask everything off and then come back in with this and i think i'm gonna do um let's see i want to mix up a color like just thin out a color and not um We'll see. Something bright. Some bright color. Alright. So I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna mix up some white and then this pale blue. Um and I'm just gonna make plenty to cover everything. So yeah, this is what you know model air looks like out of the tube. And it's just like, that's just a little tiny bit too thick. So I'm just gonna thin it down. So 
this little And then uh, I'm just going to do a little bit on some of the other marble, you know, too. This color, you know, it's fine. Like, I've, I've done all this and then I have some left over, so I'm just going to use a little bit to kind of do some more marbling. Just kind of freehanding it. I'm not going to uh, mask anything off, you know. base coat these guys <clears throat> so let's see I'm just gonna use some more uh Bethel's metal straight out of the pot um <clears throat> but I want to weather all of these because they just look it looks too clean like that so I want to I'm gonna use some Agrax earth shade on this stuff and normally I would do a coat, of, a coat of gloss varnish to protect this, but I think that I'm gonna do something else because I want these to look a little older. Um, so yeah, first off, let's do uh, these guys. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go around and kind of uh, redo these and get, um, Cause I think I like this, uh, this dark brass better. Um, and you know, like I can leave the green in there, like in the, the recesses. Kind of like dry brush it a little bit, you know, um, <clears throat> do some like edge highlighting. But, um, yeah, actually, I'm digging that. I like that weathering look. The green, you know, like the green just ties everything together, and then, um, you know, I can, I can put more patina on these, or I can leave them, or but I do want this, you know, marbling to be under this. So I'm going to make all of these uh, metal. Okay, now I'm going to do some Agrax first shade. So I'm just going to do some uh, shade on, on this stuff. Mm. Actually, use a shade brush. are drawing uh, I'm gonna touch up my dry brush a little bit I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, P3 men off white base um, 
get it. I'm just gonna use a crapped out kind of dry brush. Get those, get those edges where the paint peeled up, you know, from the masking. And I'm definitely gonna varnish everything again, but there's one more thing that I wanna do before I varnish. Okay, and then very last thing before I varnish, I'm just going to use a little bit of some pigments. And then these are just, these are pan pastels. And it's just, um, it's just straight up pigments that's in a little container, like a makeup thing. And I'm using a makeup brush, you know? So I'm just gonna kind of rub that around and it's gonna kind of give it this sort of like weathered, dirty, you know, look like um, just like a bunch of dirt has kind of blown in and, you know, collected on, on the surfaces of things. Let's just kind of, kind of weather it a little bit more. Uh, and actually, so the pigments get dulled down a lot when you varnish. So you can kind of go crazy. And then, you know, when you seal them down, um, I'll just, I'll show you guys some pictures of like the finished product, what everything looks like when it's all done. Because um, even if I put a lot of pigments down, you aren't really going to be able to see them very much. It's a very, very subtle effect. But it just, I, I like it because it just, it's that one little, last little thing that kind of makes, you know, kind of sells it, makes everything pop. Uh, like, you know, with these little skulls, it just have some dirt kind of collecting around them. But that's it. Other than that, we're done. I will show you some pictures of the finished product.